प्रभु तव मूर्ति विनोदकारी पलपन विसरे नहीं जो विसारी जो गल चरण सोल चिन्ह जेह नजर समी पे रहो हमारी एह नजर समी पे रहो हमारी एह घनश्याम महाराज नी जे हरि कृष्ण महाराज नी जे स्वामी नारायण भगवान नी जे ठाकुर जी महाराज नी जे Supreme Almighty, our beloved Gansham Maharaj, our utmost dear Thakurji Maharaj, our Pujya Guruji, Pujya Santo, and all of you Bhaktos, Jai Swami Narayan. Today I come with you with two charitras that are very, very impelling and very, very impactful. These two charitras that we want to talk about are based off of a Vachnamrut paragraph that we want to analyze today. Bhagwan Swami Narayan, when he spoke the Vachnamrut, he was doing so while practical scenarios in front of him or in that environment were being also created. Such kind of scenarios that santos and bhaktos went through those are the types of vatos Maharaj did. Nonetheless, vatos of Akshardham, Tatvagnan, Sobhaus, Prakriti, all that was there. But Maharaj himself is and was a practical God that showed and exposed many kinds of natures of the Jew that the Jew would never recognize without God himself showing the path. Bhagwan Swami Narayan has, has spoken 262 Vachamruts, but out of them, there are many Vachamruts that actually talk about the nature of the Jew or the soul. And from there, we would like to analyze a small paragraph on the Vachamrut Vartal 15th. And from there, upon reading those principles, we would like to read two charitras that would be able to understand and portray. Swami Narayan Hare. This paragraph that we want to read is from the Vachnamrut Vartal 15th chapter, and it's a question asked by Shobharam Sastri, a very, very educated um, Pandit Brahman. And um, he's asking a question. Thereupon, Shobharam Sastri asked a question, Maharaj, there are two types of jeevs, meaning souls, godly and demonic. Having, have they always been so since eternity? Or have they become due, so, due to through association? So the question is, first and foremost, there are two types of souls. One is godly and one is demonic. Now, what is the characteristics of a soul that is godly and what are the characteristics of a soul that is demonic? Well, when we look at this feature, those who want to engage more in devotion, those who want to serve more, those who want to help others, those who do not want to break but want to make, those who want to do something good for the others, that soul can be characterized as a godly soul or jiv. And that cannot be only determined through one month, two months, but a long period of time by seeing such kinds of characteristics, one is able to identify that this is a godly jiv. On the other side, a demonic jiv, Complete opposite, just like how there is black and white, just like how there is north and south in the same way. The demonic Jew is usually one who is, has a tendency of wickedness, has a tendency of, of doing harm to others without any kind of reason. 
watching others suffer, watching others go into pain. That is something that the demonic Jew, the demonic Jew never wants to worship God. The demonic Jew always wants to engage in worldly pleasures. All these are the characteristics of a demonic Jew. Now, the question is, have they always been so since eternity? Or have they become so due to association? Now, the Jew is eternal. Ever since Bhagwan Swami Narayan, meaning no time, ever since there has been God, there has been the Jew. Not only one Jew, but countless Jews, countless souls. Now, Shobaram Sastri's question is, have they been godly and demonic from the beginning, meaning eternity, or do they become godly and demonic due to some kind of association while they come on this earth? That's the question at hand. Let's look at Bhagwan Swaminarayan's answer. Sri Jamaraj replied, in the beginning, during the period of dissolution, both types of Jews, godly and demonic, are absorbed within Maya. Then, when the cosmos is created, both types of Jeevs emerge, each with their own nature. There are also those ordinary Jeevs who become godly or demonic due to association with godly or demonic Jews. Also, there are some godly and, some, and demonic Jeevs who gradually become such a nature due to their karmas that they perform. But mainly, now here's the main essence of our conversation or our lecture for today. But mainly, the cause of such godly and demonic natures is the grace or the wrath of the Satpurush. For example, Jay and Vijay are, were attendants of God, but since they maligned holy persons such as the Sankadiks, they attained a demonic nature. Prahladji, on the other hand, was a demon, but since he imbibed the preaching of Naradji, he was known as an eminent devotee of God. Thus, whomever the wrath of the great Puruj falls upon, that Jew becomes demonic, and wh whoever the great Puruj is pleased upon, that Jew becomes godly. There is no other reason for becoming godly or demonic. Thus, one who desires to attain liberation should by no means malign God or God's bhakta, Rather, he should do only whatever pleases God and God's bhakta. Bhagwan Swaminarayan's uh, very, very straightforward answer really gives us an insight and kind of helps us introspect that am I godly or am I demonic? And nonetheless, have I become godly or demonic due to association, due to my karmas, or what? And the third thing is, have I pleased the great Purush, the Ekantik Sat Purush, to become more godly? Or have I displeased the Ekantik Sat Purush to become more demonic? Now, what better um, examples than Charitras uh, that we can analyze in the time of Bhagwan Swami Narayan that I want to actually share with you today? So, first and foremost, the Charitra of wickedness, demonic-natured uh, um, people. How are they, how do they respond, and what is the actions, and what is the fruits of hurting or saying despiteful, despiteful things to God's bhakta? And what, what happens to such a person we would like to look at? Swami Narayan Hare, Shobharam becomes blind. I want to clarify, Shobharam Sastri is a different person and the charitra that I am reading, Shobharam, is a different person. There is no let up in the jealousy attitude of the opponents towards Maharaj and his Paramansas. You know, in that time, um, Bhagwan Swaminarayan's movement was rapidly growing so, so quickly throughout Gujarat and throughout India that everyone started to admire and respect it so much so that the different other movements and sects that were around kind of became a little dimmed out, grayed out. 
And due to that, a lot of jealousy and hatred arised. And on that notion, those such kinds of bhavas and vairagis uh, wanted to destroy Bhagwan Swaminarayan's rep by hurting Bhagwan Swaminarayan's santos, by putting false allegations towards Bhagwan Swaminarayan and his santos, and by saying despiteful things, um, spreading false rumors. Such kinds of acts these Vairagis and Bhavas performed and tried to hurt Bhagwan Swaminarayan's movement. But just to clarify, as we see today, today, right now, the Swaminarayan movement is skyrocketing and nothing or no one has set it back. That proves, number one, that Bhagwan Swaminarayan is Sarvopari, supreme, and number two, his santos are Sarvopari and supreme as well. And number three, his bhaktos are, all, are also Sarvopari and supreme. If this wasn't the case, then some way, somehow, some kind of, um, you can say, uh, breakage uh, in reputation would occur, uh, a negative vibe, credit would occur, but no allegations whatsoever have hurt the Swaminarayan Sampraday due to Bhagwan Swaminarayan being manifest and pragat, ever so present on this earth, even while in Akshardham. So, they used to speak low and spread false rumors about Maharaj, as we just spoke about. Who? Vairagis and Bhavas. Some of them used to say that with the help of the scriptures, they were ready to prove that Swaminarayan was not God. Others said that the Swaminarayan Sampraday was not based on the Vedas, so it was not part of Hinduism. That's how much they wanted to deroot the Swaminarayan Sampraday. But none of their arguments could stand the scholarly argument, arguments of the Paramahansas. The Muktas followed the reality during their discussion with the Paramahansas, but the opponents continued to malign Maharaj and Satsang. On one side, the Paramahansas would stitch, and on the other side, Bhavas and Vairagis would cut. This was their whole, you can say, job, occupation. This is what they lived for. They didn't have t time to worship God because they were too busy in destroying God's reputation. This is how much of a false, uh, you can say, confusion was set up in their mind. And such, one such Brahman lived in Vishnagar. His name was Shobaram. He was learned but was jealous of Maharaj and the satsang. In Vishnagar, he was criticizing the satsang in the presence of a satsangi named Baldevbhai. He said to Shobaram, Shobaram Swaminarayan is God. His glory and proneness are immense. He helps people attain samadhi. He performs miracles everywhere and propagates the pure Vaishnava traditions. Therefore, be pure and seek shelter unto him. He will grant you salvation. So Baldevbhai was actually a positive-sided godly Jew who had propagated and was propagating to Shobaram about Bhagwan Swaminarayan, how great he is, what he has done, and one should worship him to attain liberation. But Shobaram, who was very proud of his scholarship, roared, if your Swaminarayan is worth the name, why does he not punish me when I have been attacking him in public? Now, this Shobaram, this soul, this ant-like soul compared to Bhagwan, who is like a mountain, is trying to challenge Bhagwan by saying that why doesn't he attack me in public if I am spreading false uh, allegations about him? If he really is God, why does he not make me blind? What kind of a scholarly person actually wishes to become blind by challenging God that if he is, if he is God, why doesn't he make me blind? I don't think he should wish for this. 
Baldev replied, Shobaram, you don't know what you are inviting. Bhagwan Swaminarayan is Satya Sankalp. He fulfills everyone's wishes. Why are you inviting blindness? Why don't you ask for something good? Have you lost your senses? I mean, there's so many other options that Shobaram can say that if Bhagwan Swaminarayan is God, then he should uh, give me darshan of his divine abode, Akshradham. If Bhagwan Swaminarayan is God, then I will be able to do this or that, something like that, and at least in a positive fashion. But Shobaram, just how smart he was, he was also that dumb. Because instead of asking for something good and proper, he actually asked for becoming blind. Yeah, he invited blindness into his life. Now let's see what happens. Shobaram arrogantly said, Yes, I am boldly challenging your Swaminarayan Bhagwan to make me blind within eight days if he is a really God. Now this kind of a Jew is demonic. Definitely whoever wants to hurt the Swaminarayan Sampradaya, who wants to hurt Bhagwan Swaminarayan Santo by maybe not physically, by, by spreading negative rumors and false allegations, is definitely considered to be demonic. There is no doubt in that. And Shobaram was kind of like, you can say, the top level um, person who was kind of propagating. He said arrogantly, yes, I am boldly challenging your, your Swaminarayan Bhagwan to make me blind within eight days if he is really God. The evil genius Shobaram made evil demands and within four days he lost his sight. Bhagwan Swaminarayan is Satya Sankalp even till this t even till this day. And in that time this was proven that Shobaram challenged that if your God is God, if he, if Swaminarayan is God, then I'll sh I shall become blind in eight days. Not only eight, but four days, Shobaram became blind. During the course of his travels, Maharaj came to Vishnagar. He learned from the satsangis about Shobaram's blindness. Now, one side, demonic jeeves remain demonic. And on the other side, Bhagwan Swaminarayan's compassionate nature remains compassionate. Compassionate, Maharaj felt pity and remarked, Really? Has he become blind on my account? Let me go in person to give it to, to him and give him my darshan. Let me forgive him and restore his vision. Please send a word to him that Maharaj is calling on him. Maharaj actually wished his best and said that, I want to give him darshan, I want to make him better, so let's call upon him. But, as the saying reveals, good sense is lost when a man is facing destruction. Stupid Shobaram told the devotees, I don't want to see your God. Look at how ignorant, look at how, how much arrogance, look at how much demonicness is inside of Shobaram. He, he posted two servants at the gate and refused to see Maharaj. With a heavy heart, Maharaj returned from his house and Shobaram hurled his life into the bottomless pit of eternal darkness and missed the opportunity of having the darshan of God himself. Now, let us ask ourselves, after hearing, listening to this Charitra, that this might not happen to us or we may not challenge God by saying that if he is God, then I shall become blind. But, santos that are here, you can say God's representatives, if they invite us, if they help us, if they want to guide us, if they want to help us reach new heights in spirituality, will we let them do so? Or will we act according to our mind? Will we ignore satsang or will we accept satsang? These are all kinds of questions definitely to ask. And by asking these questions, 
our mind, our heart will determine and give us an answer if we are demonic or if we are godly. Those who are close in satsang definitely are very, very, you can say happy and very, very, you can say satisfied. But those who are far away from Maharaj, far away from satsang, far away from santo and bhakto, definitely have some kind of knots in their head that they have to untie in order to receive the bliss of God and the satsang. But do we want to be like Shobaram and refuse God's invitation of darshan? Do we want to be like Shobaram and refuse Bhagwan Swaminarayan's love and affection? Do we want to be like Shobaram and completely deny Bhagwan Swaminarayan's invitation? Or do we want to become like Muktanan Swami and Goparan Swami and Parvatbhai and Dada Khachar and Sura Khachar? Such kind of bhaktos that, that kept and ha had tolerated so much insults so that merely Bhagwan Swaminarayan would give them darshan, merely Bhagwan Swaminarayan would give them affection, merely Bhagwan Swaminarayan would give them their raji, his rajipo. It's all in our hands. So according to that Vachramrut that we just read, if the great Purush becomes pleased, then one becomes godly, and if the great Purush becomes displeased, then one becomes demonic. But in the end, that what Shanrut said, that one should do whatever pleases God and his God's Bhakta. God's Bhakta meaning the Ekantik Satpurush. Whatever pleases them. For example, suppose that we come to Mandir and, and, and we are in front of Puja Guruji here and we are living with him, we are having his darshan, and we have this niyam of doing 100 maras. It's a very good niyam. It's a very, very good niyam to have. And Guruji knows that you're doing 100 maras, but suppose at that time Guruji needs help, your seva of cleaning the mandir. And you know that this is my fixed time from 9 to 10, I want to do my maras. And instead of doing maras, Guruji says, please help out all these bhaktos, they need help in seva. And you know the seva is going to take the whole day. Then, instead of doing our 100 maras, we should do whatever pleases the Ekantik Satpurush and engage ourselves in seva. We should engage ourselves in seva and we should help our satsang fellowship out. And due to that, we should uh, help our satsang fellowship and uh, satsangis out. And from there, we should attain the rajipo of the Ekantik Satpurush. So that's one side. On the other side, I want to tell you, actually, a whole uh, uh, incident of how you can say one can please Bhagwan and how a godly soul is. Swami Narayan Hare. This is the opposite side, just like how blindness occurred. Now, the title of this story is the Gift of Vision. In Limri, Maharaj was a guest at Mulji Shet's house. A cot was placed for Maharaj, and the sadhus were also offered seats in the compound. Maharaj was making inquiries about the sadhus and devotees. At that time, a blind woman was seen entering Mulji Shet's house, feeling the wall while walking. All the people were looking at Maharaj, but Maharaj saw the woman from a distance. Maharaj asked of Mulji Shet, who was sitting in the front of him, pointing towards the woman, who is the woman toiling around? Mulji Shet hesitantly replied, Maharaj, she is my wife. Maharaj observed, really, is it troublesome to be blind? The woos of a blind woman are endless. 
she has to do the household work and cooking. Again, she must guard against, inse guard against insects and mites. She has forever to, be, to depend on someone's assistance or help. Muljishit replied, Yes, Maharaj, but we are helpless. Muljishit was a bhakta of God. Muljishit understood his situation, but Muljishit never, ever tried to pose at God or tell God that why have you, become, why have you made my wife blind? Nothing like that. Muljishit's understanding was whatever Maharaj is doing is for my wellness and whatever Maharaj is doing for my wife is also for her wellness. Such kind of understanding really attains the Rajipo of Bhagwan and his Ekandik Satpurush. Such kind of understanding of Bhagwan being the all-doer, Bhagwan being, being the one who, who is doing everything. I am nothing. Bhagwan is doing everything. Such kind of understanding really goes a long way. And such kind of understanding, Bhagwan Swami Narayan does works through such kind of a person. So Murji Shet replied, Yes, Maharaj, but we are helpless. That's our destiny. We must suffer it. In this world, so many blind people are living helplessly. Even, a blindness, even in blindness, people have to do business. Meaning you have to live your life, even if you have some kind of ailing illness, some kind of, some kind of a, a disease or some kind of a disfigurement like this of blindness. One still has to go about one's life and keep living it. Because what is one going to do by just sitting around? So from this we can definitely reflect, about, reflect upon our life that as a satsangi, yes, I may have some kind of physical ailment, some kind of financial problem, some kind of social problem, but since we live in the world, we must deal with it and move on. This world is like this. This world is like a roller coaster. At times you will get much credit. And at other times, you will be not recognized at all. This world is like a roller coaster. At times, you will become very rich. And at other times, Bhagwan will take your riches away. This world is like a roller coaster in the form of, at times, you may get diseases and, and illnesses and become very, very sick. And at other times, you will be the healthiest person on earth. It's an up and down, up and down until we become released from the cycle of life and death. And that is why we're here. That is why Bhagwan has brought us here. So that we become completely relieved and completely separate from this cycle of life and, life and death that this soul is going through and attain Bhagwan's abode akshardam. If we can just hurdle this one you can say obstacle, then Bhagwan is right there. Bhagwan is not far away at all. It's just this thin, thin wall, which is very, very tough to break in the form of Maya. But due to the association of the Akantik Satpurush, due to this satsang, due to santos, and due to the support of bhaktos, we'll definitely be able to do so. So do not become disheartened, do not become saddened, do not become depressed due to problems in our life. Learn to deal with them, learn to find solutions, learn to excel them, learn to become a stronger person. That is the characteristics, characteristic of a Loyadam Parivar Bhakta. And that is definitely what we should possess. Nonetheless, in the world, there are so many that are blind, but they still have to do business. How can they continue otherwise? Maharaj observed. Maharaj observed. It would have, it would have been good if your wife had vision. Mulji Shet replied, of course, it would be better. Meanwhile, Mulji Shet's wife 
sent for him and said, Maharaj has done us a great favor. Look, I can see everything. I am sighted. How beautiful Maharaj looks in his beautiful white shurwal and bag. You too should change your dirty clothes and put on new ones and go and thank Maharaj that my vision has been restored by his mercy and grace. Maharaj is obviously Satya Sankalp. Whatever Maharaj wishes for happens. And Maharaj wished for it that night. And in the morning when this old woman woke up, she could see the world again. Mujishid's joy knew no bounds. He put on new clothes and rushed outside. He fell at the feet of Maharaj and said, Maharaj, you have done me a great favor. My wife can now see, your, see by your mercy and grace. You have illuminated her life. She has been craving for your darshan for a long time. You are really Satya Sankal, meaning wish fulfilling. Maharaj stayed at Muljishit's house for some time. Muljishit and his wife served Maharaj with great devotion and love and derived great pleasure from it. Later on in his life, Muljishit left, Mulji left everything and served as a manager to Sriji Maharaj. Think about it. This is the fruits of being godly. Maharaj changed Muljishit's wife's pradabd destiny completely around. She could have continued being blind throughout her life and died blind without even having the darshan of Maharaj. But due to Muljishit's affection, due to Muljishit's devotion, due to Muljishit's wife's devotion and affection, Bhagwan also kept affection for Muljishit and his wife. And due to that, Maharaj changed their pradabd around and gave vision to Muljishit's wife. This happened all due to serving Bhagwan and helping Bhagwan or Bhagwan's bhakta out. So it is all in the matter of our hands. What kind of karmas do we want to perform? Do we want to perform bad karmas and completely go against the words of God and, and the Bhagwan's ikantik satpurush? Or do we want to follow in Bhagwan's Agna and do we want to follow in the Akantik Satpurusha's Agna and live and develop a proper life and attain Akshardham? Whatever we want to do, we can do. And according to this Vachnamrut, Bhagwan gives us a medicine. If you are demonic or godly, that's one thing. But the solution is if you want to become godly, then you should do whatever pleases God in his Ekantik Satpurush. And if you want to displease, or if you want to become demonic, you should do the opposite of whatever God in his Ekantik Satpurush says. So, we are very, very fortunate to have this satsang. We are very, very fortunate to have this whole fellowship that we are able to grow and grow more spiritually so that we can attain Akshar Dham with little ease. So one should think about one's actions. One should think about how one, should, uh, how one needs to behave in order so that God and His Ekantik Satpurush becomes happy upon us and we attain Akshar Dham in this very life. Saying this, my humble Jai Swaminarayan.